welcome back. Well, Liverpool have gone through to the last 16 of the Champions League again. Jurgen Klopp, um, full of admiration for Salzburg before the game, and I'm sure he has that same feeling afterwards because Salzburg did test Liverpool for sure, particularly in the first 45 minutes. But two goals in the space of 100 seconds broke the Salzburg resistance. And Liverpool, as we look at confirmation of Group E, go through as the group winners, crucially for them. Uh, always a better idea to finish first in the group. The draw for the last 16 takes place on Monday at 11 o'clock. And you can follow that on RT Online and on the RT Player as well. But Liam, let's get straight into it because, uh, as I mentioned, and we said at half-time that Salzburg had certainly put it up to Liverpool and then some. The goal that kind of broke the resistance, 57 minutes. Yeah, it was a good, a good Liverpool move. Uh, full-backs both involved. Uh, Trent Alexander over to Robertson and Mane shows how quick he is in this instance here. And just chips one up. Keita steers it towards the goal and the defender can't get his body in the way. But watch Manish's pace here, Dara. Away he goes. Gets there before the keeper. Uh, I thought he was Liverpool's best player tonight, Mane. Being the best forward all season. And that's hard, you know, compared to Salah, compared to Firmino. But I think he's just been a notch above everybody this season. Absolutely brilliant. For sure he was and is. A um, hundred seconds later, Salah's goal. Th this is an incredible finish. It's, it's very hard to know what to say over this. Bianco. It is, yeah. So many players who are stronger on their right foot wouldn't get near to being able to finish this the way he is on his, on his weaker foot. Ngane here is the centre half. He was at fault for the first goal. This is only obviously a minute and a half after the first goal, whether he was still rattled by his error, but it was awful defending. But the quality of that finish... To be able to do it at that pace with no time to settle himself or compose himself, he just instinctively took on the shot. Very tight angle and at that stage, just no coming back for Salzburg. They had their opportunities in the first half and couldn't take them. Mm. Like it, was, it was in the balance at half-time, but mm. like, did, you, did you ever doubt that Liverpool wouldn't be able to do what they've, they've done tonight and, and win the match? Well, you, like, you know they have the quality to do mm. so. What we saw from them there, we've seen them do numerous times before. And a finish like that from Salah, we know he's capable of doing it. What was surprising us, or not surprising us, what was pleasing us most was the attacking intent and the positivity and the, and the confidence of Salzburg. And that just waned, particularly after those two goals ahead, went they in, they were gone. They had ahead earlier on in the, in yeah. the, before Liverpool scored. Haaland, yeah. I think, had a great chance. Let's have a look. He did, yeah. So much, so much of the pre-match talk was about Haaland. This is his first Champions League game in his career where he hasn't scored. This is his sixth game. I think he was just, he took an extra touch there. It was a wonderful ball. He peeled off at the back. He took a touch perfectly. Had he hit it there, that was his chance. But that was at nil-nil. That was at nil-nil. That goes in. It's an entirely different conversation possibly we're having now. And Haaland here is involved in the build-up play. He's a big lad. He takes up good positions. But they couldn't get a clear opening here to, to, to test the goalkeeper at all. Daka came on, they tried to, to bring him on to make it a, a, an impact. Decent ball here to um, Minamino, who had really, really good first half. Deserved the goal from his first half performance, but couldn't continue that into the second half. After the goals went in from Liverpool, you could just see collectively Salzburg yeah. just did the confidence drain, their heads dropped, and the result was settled long before the final whistle. And Liverpool controlled the game well. They Midfield, did, yeah. they kept the ball and they just took the sting out of it. It's been a great week's work for Liverpool, you know, to be... Uh, qualify as, mm. as top of the group and uh, to be carrying on and beating in the league and winning those games is incredible the, the run they're on there it's fantastic mm. and it's going to be a busy month for them it could be a really incredible month for Liverpool mm. though yeah well I, I, I can see them just getting, uh, going on to better things you know they've seen off Manchester City in the Premier League uh, and I think that was the only danger Liverpool or uh, Leicester are doing brilliantly to be hanging on a bit they play Leicester over Christmas and I think if they can beat Leicester they'll put her away you know I think that's on St Stephen's Day. Let's look at Sadio Mane. You've spoken already about, well, you know, when Firmino, Firmino excuse me, and Salah weren't at 110%, this guy well, has yeah, been at it all and, the time. And, and this, this is an example of a spirit, Darry. You know, he chases back, he works hard, he gets back. Another forward would have laid down there and looked for a foul, but he's got tremendous, tremendous uh, ability. Uh, he can dribble and he can pass. Watch this for a pass for Salah. I think Jim said Salah could have had four. He could have done it very easily. He had two great chances in the first half. But they, they link up well together. And I, I, you remember that little spat they had uh, early yes. on in the season when they were accused of not passing to one another? Well, I think all that's gone now. And they're fantastic together. Firmino was a bit under par tonight. Mm. But I thought Salah and Mane, in, Mane in particular, were fabulous. 
Yeah, did you buy into that? Uh, the, the, the media reports around the spat the two of them had? Well, it was certainly footage from them during games where there was plenty of arm gestures and, and, and looked like they weren't clicking together at all, but they've obviously settled their differences, or if they haven't, it hasn't impacted their I'm performance. Sure, I'm sure Klopp has sorted exactly, it out. Yeah. I think he's a great man manager as well mm. as tactical manager is great it's where uh, the, how he puts the team together I think the players really buy into him as a person and how he uses the players now you're talking about the fixture congestion over the next few weeks and beyond he, he's got a, a really good pool squad of players there and the trick will be to, to, to notice who needs a rest before they start get, giving tired or jaded performances and he's done that really effectively they've topped the group and qualified, they're still top of the Premier League and looking very, very strong. So Lovren went off, I think, with an injury. I don't mm. know what, the, what For the, the second game in yeah, a row. Yeah. It was only a cramp, I think, just before half time on Saturday. So they'll hope that's nothing serious. So if they can if they can get a bit fortunate in avoiding big injuries to key players, they could they could be on having a hell of a season. There were a couple mm. to come back as well. Mm. Matty Matty was one was a good defender, yeah. yeah. And Fabinho, well, we don't know how long is he going to be um, unavailable for. Um, the, the, the fact that they've won the group, like it's the old cliche, but it is, you'd rather win it than finish second. You technically get, well, a, a lesser team, shall we put it that way? Yeah, in the last you, would, you would get a lesser team. A second plus, place plus team. you have the, the second leg at home, don't mm. you? And we've seen what Liverpool can do with the second leg at home. Even losing last year to Barcelona 3 yeah. 0, they came and turned it over, you know. Uh, they're, they're the best team in, in, in Europe at the moment for me, you know, uh, probably the best team in the world. We'll see that over the next yeah, period. Yeah, yeah in, 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 that'll be confirmed in, in a couple of weeks. Winners again? Looking like the favourites at the moment. I mean, they have threats from everywhere. I mean, even there are times where I think Firmino was quiet tonight. Salah hasn't been at his best recently, but the fullbacks play so high and so wide, they're always a threat. If you take your eye off them, they'll punish you. And if you focus too much on them, as we've seen several times, a long ball over the top, the Salah using his pace will punish you as well. So they have threats from everywhere. They must be full of confidence. The dressing must be a joy to be in, given how Klopp manages it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't yeah. bet against them now. Yeah, it's just, I suppose, the, 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 the way this team has developed over what he's there since October 15, Klopp, and the pieces that he's added as he's well, gone along. The recruitment has got to be the best in the league. I know Manchester City threw loads of money at it. Yeah. But Liverpool haven't had the luxury of doing that. I think they had to do it in a very logical sort of way. And it all started with Brendan Rodgers, really. You know, two or three of the players in mm -hmm. that team were, uh, were, were Rodgers' purchases alongside a committee of people we, we believe that, that uh, are in charge of recruitment. Also, Coutinho Rodgers brought into the club, and it was his sale that enabled uh, uh, Van Dijk mm -hmm. and Alisson to come to the club. OK, very good.